Hello and welcome to the Car Carina channel. So in today's video, I'm going to show you a complete engine assembly of the A25A 2.5 liter new Toyota engine, also called the Dynamic Force engine. Today's video is going to be a little bit of a different format. I could not film at the dealership where I work, so I had to take pictures. So it's going to be pictures of a complete assembly with narrative and I'll, I'm going to walk you through everything that is involved in a complete assembly of this engine, including why we are assembling a brand new engine. But before we get started, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some of my other videos. If you're a returning subscriber, well, thank you so much for watching another one of my videos. And without further ado, let's get to work. Before we get the video started, I want to say one thing. Once you see what happened to this engine, the old one that we are replacing, you're going to freak out if you have one of these engines. You're going to wonder if this is a common problem. I want to say this before you jump on the comments. This is not a common problem. This is a unicorn case. And at the end of the video, I'm going to discuss with you what are the conditions that cause this catastrophe to happen. Having said that, let's start the video. So let's talk about what actually happened to this engine and why are we doing this whole thing? Why are we replacing everything? So uh, let's go back to school when we used to take attendance. So uh, piston number one, present, piston number two, present, piston number three, present, piston number four, piston number four. Oh boy, we got a runner. We have a runner for sure. Ah, there you are. You didn't go too far. Ladies and gentlemen, piston number four blew up and that's okay. That's why all this metal debris was all over this engine. So we have to replace everything with an oil passage. Everything in this engine will get replaced except the front covers, which are just covers and the oil pan, which can be cleaned. So uh, here is the uh, giant pile of parts. It took me longer to sort through these parts and probably do the whole job. But nonetheless, here is a brand new block in the crate. This is a short block that is completely assembled. Pistons, jets, everything, but no sensors or anything else connected to it. So here's the back of that block. I mounted the engine stand and now we're going to start assembly. The first order of business is this is called the stiffening case or the crank case cover at the bottom or the sub pan or the upper oil pan. Here's the new one. Here's the old one. You can see all the metal debris all over the old one. There's your oil filter. So starting with the new one, the first component we're going to install on it is a new balance shaft. This just balances the motion of the engine. Next, we're going to install our rear main seal because it's much easier to install a rear main seal when you have that sub pan off. Here's some sealer and here is the sub pan installed with the balance shaft. The balance shaft, of course, is timed to the engine, so it has to be in a specific spot. And then once that's installed and torqued to spec, I went ahead and installed the oil pump. You can see that that's the variable oil pump that I always tell you about. You got to watch your oil weights. Also the oil pickup, oil level sensor. This is something with this engine that it has an actual oil level sensor. Usually they reserve that for Lexus, but in this one, they put it on Toyota. Next, we're going to clean the oil pan from this mess because we're going to be reusing this one. Here's a clean oil pan ready to go back. Here's the oil pan installed and of course the oil filter. At this point, the short block is ready to assemble. One thing I will install, which is something you might have seen if you've seen engines taken apart, Toyota engines, there's a little plastic baffle. It prevents gurgling sounds when, when the engine has coolant in it. Now, if you ask me how I know that, I've actually seen an engine that makes gurgling noises, like you hear it in the heater core when you rev the car, because that baffle was missing. So you can see that baffle right here installed. At this point, we're going to cover the block and we're going to go work on the cylinder head because we're also replacing the cylinder head. And of course, every once in a while, you get a part that you open and you see this awesome Japanese style warning uh, drawing. You can see here, keep away from metal parts or sharp, object, sharp objects. And uh, that's the uh, their idea of the drawing. So here's the new cylinder head, the old cylinder head. One thing I will note on the new cylinder head, usually the spark plug tubes don't come installed. You have to press them in, but this one came pre-installed, which is pretty cool. We are replacing four valves, which got damaged. Here are the valves. Obviously you can see that they're bent. So I'm only replacing the valves for number four, which is the piston that got damaged along with the springs, just in case something got to happen to the springs. So at this point, before I install anything, before I valve lap, we'll talk about that in a second. 
I installed the valve stem seals. You know, these are seals you might have known about. If your uh, engine smokes after it's set overnight or on deceleration, these are the seals. They just suck oil into the combustion chamber and when there's high vacuum. After that, here's the four valves that I replaced. These are valves number four. Here is a close-up of them. At this point, of course, all these valves got installed. I have to lap every single valve. It's not exactly in the book valve lapping the or valve grinding, if you would. Some people call it that. So it's basically just grinding the surface of this of the seat versus the valve. That just gives it a better seal. It naturally happens over time, but I don't know. This is something old school that I learned and I continue to do and never had a single issue. So at this point, everything is ready assembled in the cylinder head. And one thing I forgot to mention, this, is, this engine has dual injection. So it has port and it has direct. You can see the direct rail is on the old cylinder head. So we're gonna go ahead and remove that. We're also gonna swap all the studs. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Toyota cylinder heads, they don't come with any studs. And actually even the short block is missing a few plugs and stuff like that. Here is the rail and direct injectors. I am gonna replace direct injector number four just because okay, that's the cylinder that blew up. And remember that direct injector is inside the cylinder, so it could have gotten damaged. So actually this is day number two. After we packed it up for the night, we came back, I came back the next day. So now we're ready to install our cylinder head, put the head gasket, here's how that looks like. And the cylinder head is installed. And one, one cool thing about this cylinder head, and this is something at first, I've done almost every single Toyota engine ever made, been worked on it, took it apart for one reason or another. This cylinder head bolts, they are different thickness. So the four outside ones are different thickness than the middle ones. That's probably something designed, but that's the first. I've never seen that before on a Toyota engine. If you've seen it in one of the older Toyota engines, let me know in a comment. At this point, we're gonna install this little coolant plug. This is for different options, maybe some different option cars, hybrids, Highlander, you know, this is a Camry they're working on, but some of them utilize that coolant port. The Camry doesn't, so there's a dead plug that seals it. Now we're gonna assemble our cam housing or cam tower also called. It's just a cam carrier that sits on top of the cylinder head. So I took the cam caps off. We're gonna install our cam shafts, as you can see here, and that's installed and torqued to spec. So these are the lifters. The lifters are hydraulic. They're all new. These are all new lifters. You gotta soak them in oil and then there's a special procedure. You put a pin, special tool pin, that opens the plunger while they're submerged in oil to bleed them so they wouldn't make noise. By the way, if you've heard of the Tundra motors, the 5.7, the 4.6 make clattering noise when they sit for a long time. This is actually what makes the clatter. They just bleed down and now they're just loose. They don't have pressure. So right here, I'm preventing that from happening to this engine by bleeding them before installation. So here they are installed, 16 brand new lifters that are fully bled and ready to go. Also, there are little valve stem caps. So these are little caps that sit on top of the valve. And then we're gonna install our rockers. These are hydraulic rockers. They're also brand new in this engine. We're gonna put some sealer and here it goes. We're gonna start working on the timing chain, but before we do that, there is a little jet that sits there. This was actually when this engine first came on, the very first examples, some techs forgot to put these on, and you can imagine the nightmare, because you have to take this whole thing apart again just to put this little jet here. So here is that jet installed. Here's the front cover. So this, this engine has two front covers, one in the back, one in the front. This is the back one. We have to install it first before we can install our timing chain and the gears and all that. So after a couple hours of cleaning, I think I'll call that good. Let's put some sealer on it and install it back on the engine. At this point, we're gonna start installing our timing gears. This is the exhaust one, kind of a different design because it has three bolts that hold it, not one big one and it has a little bolt that installs in the middle. It doesn't really tighten it, it's just the oil control valve. And here's some guides and the tensioner. These are all new parts. And here's the brand new chain. Per the instructions, you gotta install the gear, put the chain, then install the strange gear, we call it, because this is the gear that's driven by the motor. I will leave a link for I went over how this system works, how this new variable valve timing worked, just so you know. At this point, 
your timing chain is installed you see the marks i also installed the oil pump timing chain actually this is a kind of a, they went back to old school most of the most of the newer engines they started having the oil pump built into the front timing cover but in this engine they went back to that style where it has that little tensioner that pushes on the chain, the small chain for the oil pump. That little thing only has a spring. It doesn't have any hydraulic pressure or anything to put tension on that chain. Here's the front cover, the, the outside front cover, the second front cover. It's ready to go, all cleaned up. New front crank seal. And here's some sealer on it. It's back together. See, it's coming together. We're almost there. We're getting there. The mount, this is the... the bracket for the engine mount on the side it is actually important to install that right away because it goes through the seater and, and they used it as part of the bolts that hold the cover so this has to go right away when you install it before the sealer dries this point here's a brand new valve cover of course most people will wonder well why are you replacing the valve cover it's just the cover there's actually a passage in the valve cover that goes from the cam tower to the valve cover and it has these jets to spray oil on top of the valve train. That's why there's a passage there and that's why we're replacing that one. And here's the valve cover installed. By the way, if you're ever working on these, these two cam sensors, they're, the bolts that hold them, they're actually holding the valve cover as well. So if you're ever removing one, you gotta remove these. Don't forget, this is kind of an, an odd thing with Toyotas. Usually they don't do that. At this point, let's install our vacuum pump. This is where the valve that controls the oil pressure for the oil pump, that variable oil pump. Then here are here is the big motor that controls the variable valve timing on the intake. And this is just a little push rod that comes out and pushes that. Remember that bolt that I told you about? That's the oil control valve. This is an electronic plunger that comes out and controls the exhaust side. At this point, the engine is assembled enough where I can put it back and kind of start building on it. So here's the car back with no engine in it. The way I did this is I dropped the whole subframe with the transmission, with everything. It just makes installation a lot easier. The exhaust manifold is kind of a nightmare in this engine. So and this, this car was built in a way where it's super easy to drop the subframe with everything. And I say super easy for a professional, of course, but DIY, this is not a walk in the park because you need a lift for sure. So here's that uh, subframe with everything attached to it on the floor. Engine goes back in. At this point, I'm going to start installing a lot more accessories before it goes back in the car. First thing being the exhaust manifold. Again, I told you this is very hard. And what's hard about it is the big shield that goes on top of it. I, I don't see it in this picture, but there's a big shield that sits on top of it. And that's what's a pain because it's so close to the body. At this point, knock sensor goes back in. And then this is the oil separator. I always tell you guys, you don't need a oil cash can with this engine because it has an oil separator. Here it is with a big wire harness on it. And here is the direct injector rail with the injectors installed. You have to put all new seals and they're kind of a nightmare to install, but experience really plays a lot. The more you do with these, the better. But here's that rail installed starter. The, now we're going to go into the fast assembly where we put everything back together. It's just nuts and bolts at this point. There's not really anything internal. Here's a new intake manifold. And many people will ask, well, why are you putting a new intake manifold? When the valves bend and you have all this metal debris flying up and down, some of it will get actually sucked back into the intake. When, when the piston is going up and that valve is bent and hanging open, all this metal debris just goes inside the intake and you'll never see it and you'll never be able to clean it out of the intake because of the long runner. And then you'll put your engine, new engine back together, start it up, and one of those debris eventually will make its way inside the engine and kaboom, we're back to square one. So new intake manifold, of course. And one thing before you install the intake manifold, here is the PCV valve. For those that asked about it, it, you literally, it sits between the cylinder head and the, the intake. So here's that intake installed and a barrage of wiring and all. This is just the simple stuff. Here is the uh, fuel, pre high pressure fuel pump. Here's the pump, it's driven by the camshaft and here's the line going to the rail. At this point, coolant hoses, coolant passages, put the throttle body back. Put the coolant valves back, here they are, right next to the vacuum pump. At this point, we're starting like the big assembly. I put the EGR back, the cool, you can see the cooler right here, the EGR valves right there. Here's the, your purge valve. At this point, we're starting to advance in, in 
assembly. Here's all your coils, all the wires are ran, um, the wires for the motor, for the intake, and the, the solenoid for the exhaust. And then there's some ground and the wire for the solenoid that controls the oil, variable oil pump. And at this point, everything is pretty much assembled in the top. Here's your alternator in with the wiring, tent belt tensioner, water pump is on, everything is assembled. Here's your drive belt on. And now let's put it back in the car. Simple as lower the car, line up everything, tighten it up, lift the car with the motor and the whole assembly as you can see here. We're gonna install the side motor mount, that way everything's secure to the car. Also on the other side, we have all the wire harness, bunch of coolant hoses. We're gonna reinstall all those, as you can see here. Of course, the other mount for the transmission is also right there, so that got installed. Battery tray, battery installed. And now I'm gonna put all your intake and all this stuff, start filling up with fluids, coolant. Remember I told you that hose on the EGR, you gotta unplug when you fill it with coolant. Let's fill her up with coolant. And after all this work, ladies and gentlemen, here's the motor sound running. Runs pretty good. I am very happy with it. And it's always a nerve wracking moment where uh, you've, you've worked on this thing for a couple days and really until it's all back together, you can't really know if you missed something, forgot something. You know, you're talking about a lot of parts, very little support because this engine is new and not a lot of people have experience with it, but I've already done a few and I seem to be the most experienced on this engine in my shop, but even with that, uh, even with that, I've only done a few, not like other engines where we've done a lot. We have more experience than everybody else has experience. So I'm kind of on my own on this one in my shop, at least. Everything's back together. Car runs good. I'm all happy. Give it a little clean, probably go drive it, check for leaks, check for everything else. Give it a, a little bit more cleaning, install the covers. But before I ship it, forgot the AC charge. So there you have it, guys. This was uh, quite an adventure. It looks like a short video here, but this was a lot of work, but it was fun work. This is the work I enjoy and I love. Pretty catastrophic failure on this engine though, but turned out to be great. I want to share with you what was the condition that made this engine blow up like this and cause this multi-thousand dollar repair. So this is, and you might, some of you might have guessed it, a rental car. We get a lot of rental cars at dealerships with all kinds of problems, but usually rental cars have the weirdest, most single case, if you would, problems that we always see. Now this car didn't really have a lot of miles, it's a Camry, but the engine blew up like that. I can guarantee you from day one that this engine was started, it was pedal to the metal, no braking, no nothing, just a full abuse. and. Unfortunately, in this case, we could not really prove anything was abused, but the, from the history of rental cars coming into the dealership, that is just the way it is. We get some rental cars with the weirdest problems that then 15 years pass and we'll never see a similar problem. So this is not a common problem. This engine has been doing very well actually with very little problems. And we've already seen ones with over 100,000 miles and they run the same as when they ran the, on day one. So I'm not worried and you shouldn't be either, either. This was just an educational video so you can actually see the inside of this engine and how it's assembled. I hope you like this video. I hope you learned something new about this engine. If you like it, consider giving it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're not a subscriber. And until the next video, guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you and you have a wonderful day.